Today I'm gonna talk about my old hero Gary Kasparov, who was the 13th world champion. Uh, it, I, I've experienced uh, Kasparov uh, two times in Denmark. I have also seen him at uh, Olympiads and at tournaments, and I also, uh, as seen in an earlier video, uh, was was uh, a spectator at the world championship match against. Kapov made a big impression, and uh, when I was young, uh, much younger than today, uh, he, he was my big hero. The way he was attacking uh, chess, and and also he was a part of uh, of the history of of Russia that is taking a different turn. I made a video, um, and just for the record, I say that I'm always against war. I don't think anybody should be punished. I hope. Uh, that, well, the only thing we know that is real is the suffering from the war. People who are scared, or young Russian kids sitting in their tanks and being blown away, uh, people on uh, losing their homes or their sons or their daughters and their family and, and are on the run and so on. It's just meaningless and, and sad. Uh, so, um, and I hope it, it ends soon. Anyway, let's uh, talk about Kasparov. Um, I saw him first time in uh, 1992, I think, uh, in Kopehallen, who later burned down uh, in Fredericksburg. And uh, it was a big event where he, he came and, uh, and, and made a speech for a, a whole crowd. It was a whole uh, sports uh, uh, arena that was filled with, with spectators uh, seeing this uh, amazing amazing man uh, Kasparov and he showed the game against Predak Nikolic and I'm going to show it to you in a little while just going to talk a little bit first so it's, it's coming and it's a great great game he won the brilliancy prize in 1992 Olympiad in uh, I think it was in the Philippines uh, and uh, Kasparov he had this aura and he still have this aura of a sort of a nuclear energy. It's like you just just sense the the energy flowing from him when he's in present. And he always sort of steals the show, a little bit like Larsen. But Larsen is it was more like a, a talker. But Kasparov, you just sense the energy. And um, and and the, the 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 funny story here was that Kasparov uh, was not the only one on stage. Uh, my friend uh, Nikolai uh, Borger uh, was playing against a computer. Uh, and uh, and and Kasparov uh, was talking and walking around, and then he went when he looked around and and saw that Nikolai just make make a big mistake, and he said, "Oh, it's all over." And then he, <laughs> he gave it up, and everybody in the, <laughs> in the whole uh, arena was was laughing, and Nikolai was sitting there oh, uh, and was getting very annoyed with the guy who was who was making the computers move, <laughs> thinking like like it was him making the moves. And uh, I remember that. Um, and they had chosen, of course, Nikolai to play against the computer because they would knew who would lose because Nikolai had a very reckless style that the computer is just loves to play against. Um, and he showed the game and I was just like, whoa, this guy, man, he's tough. Then in 2003, um, I was a bit older and Kasparov uh, was in Denmark uh, and held a press conference. And I was uh, sort of uh, the host at the, the conference and I got to, to ask him a lot of questions. And I was uh, he, he was here to promote uh, the Kasparov computer that has been a big success. And uh, and, and he played a simul in uh, Lyngby store center at the same time. Um, the, the thing uh, that impresses me the most about Kasparov was that uh, he would start a story and then he would uh, start another story and then he would start another story. Then he would have like four stories going at the same time and then he would not lose the thread or anything. He would just catch the balls like uh, and 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 finish them all up and tie it all up in one big conclusion. I was like like whoa, can you really do that? And I I'm still training and trying to do it, but I'm not able to. And I think I probably don't have enough bandwidth to be able to 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 do like Kasparov. He is a very special uh, person. Uh, he's been very outspoken uh, politically. I don't think that he is uh, a big Democrat in in his heart.
So I'm I'm not saying more than that. But uh, but he was right about uh, winter is coming. Uh, that that is uh, is surely correct. Um, but in in uh, this press conference, I had a lot of questions. It was very very interesting, and we were talking about the chess world and who's got new ideas and so on and so on. And uh, then I, later he played this simul in the linguist open, and that was the old Soviet style simul in Denmark. When you play a simul, it's like if you're black or white who cares and uh, if you lose one game then it's nice because the 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 arranging club uh, get to to have a, a a game to put in in their club magazine or get to the local paper or something uh, but Kasparov he was like he want to know everybody's name before the match uh, their rating there should be no one above uh, 1900 uh, and he wanted white in all the games And he won all the games. <laughs> and, and I don't think I've ever met a, such a competitive person that was so so not going to lose even in a simul. So that was, uh, that was, that was interesting. Anyway, let's see the game uh, he won against uh, Predak Nikolic. Um, he's white. And um, that was... Uh, E5, and that's, uh, I think, uh, Wienauer Gambit um, in the Slav. Uh, and, uh, and you take and check, and this was apparently a novelty when it was played. I think Knight uh, D2 is more normal. And we say that uh, in, a, in a sort of a structural way, black is fine here, uh, but he's, uh, he's a little bit behind in development. And uh, White is gonna get more uh, time for that uh, with this move, uh, kicking the queen again. So getting the queen out and moving around like that is a little bit dangerous. But Black is hoping that his good structure uh, and and uh, access to free development, his pieces have no problems getting out, uh, is fine. And it's also like this: if White does not make any headways early in this kind of uh, situations, then Black is fine. And uh, he, he just need like three or four moves, and uh, and he's just fine. Um, and of course, Kasparov uh, is not hesitating here. He, of course, castles queenside, getting the rook into the game here. This is by some, by the way, something you. I think you learn this in Azerbaijan uh, as a kid. You just get to say you have to get the rooks into the center as fast as possible. Just look at the game of Mamoryarov, the Mamoryarov rooks. I think I made a video about that as well. Um, and by the way, Kasparov is, uh, he, he, he uh, was raised in uh, Baku, which is in Azerbaijan, but uh, his, his uh, name was first uh, Weinstein after his father, um, and, uh, and he was Armenian Jew. His mother's Armenian, and he was very close to his mother, by the way. His father died rather early, and he, he later switched his name to uh, Kasparov because I don't think it's it was so nice to be Jewish uh, in that area at that time, and um, and it is still probably a, pr a problem uh, anyway. I know a lot of uh, Jews uh, have left uh, Russia and so on because they are not that welcome. And this is interesting. And this shows uh, Kasparov, he likes dynamics. Uh, so um, he does not want the bishop here where it's not doing that much. Um, and and in a symmetrical position, he wanted here. Um, and he wants to attack on uh, the king side. And there's the F file. And there's a lot of, uh, let's say that this, this guy will come here and And these uh, knights can jump wherever like. So a lot of pieces are ready to, to jump. And we also have, uh, I made make it, we also have this x-ray effect. That's always annoying. So he moves immediately. Bishop here. White is really starting to trend. I would be very worried about uh, this position. Um, it's not so easy to find uh, squares. Of course, there's a weak pawn here. But that's the only problem White have, and and his initiative will almost always win something that will uh, enable him to get at least enough compensation for the pawn. Um, makes sense to try and get the rooks connected. Just let me get this here, some rooks into uh, here. Let's exchange all the rooks and 
and then we can start playing, right? This is uh, what uh, Nicholas is hoping for. Um, I played uh, Nicholas, I think, two times, and I blundered a piece the last time. The first time it was a draw. Um, he's a pretty strong player. Um, also, uh, he's one of the older players that sort of kept a high level, and he still plays for, um, I think, Solingen in the German Bundesliga. Bishop here, all the pieces are coming out. Uh, I think these uh, bishops here are known as uh, Horowitz bishops. I'm not completely sure. I'm not a big guy on uh, on terminology, but, but I think it is. And um, getting rid of the bishop um, and knight here. And we see a knight here. And by the way, Kaspar said something uh, interesting. He said that, with, which I also heard uh, Larsen say, that with the knight here, uh, it's not dangerous if black has his bishop here so black is hoping for this and that's also why he played this move and uh, and you almost got the answer here so uh, if black gets to play this move he's probably fine does he get to play unless of course there is uh, something in 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 the d file um and you could you could imagine something like g4 could be inter interesting for white here but but still i think uh, black will play bishop here and uh, on g5 he will go here and uh, start to to look for the future with confidence so it was not a desperate thing for white to do but it's it seems like a smart thing to do so here it comes are you ready this is kasparov poof slam just destroying the pawn structure for black uh, and we we sense that this bishop has a great future ahead of it you can just feel it um and there's of course no if you don't take it and move the rook and it goes back then you're totally and utterly lost so black has to take uh, and here comes the queen and uh, due to the pin on um on the king, uh, this one is threatened now. So, um, uh, the, the thing is, black and white is probably also threatening, uh, for instance, if black covers it, he's probably playing this and taking here again. So, um, so if, if, for instance, some like this, you just, well, here you can also do uh, this move. The thing is, this one can never leave because there is is a mate here, and it's gonna uh, it's gonna hurt, and, and it's probably coming to this square. Uh, is 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 definitely a possibility. Getting ready to to meet the black king. Uh, knight f8 makes a lot of sense. Um, getting ready to meet uh, queen g6 with knight d6 and getting the knight out of the way and getting ready to let's exchange a lot of pieces on the d file please please let's just exchange thank you um h4 um and uh, what's the the idea behind this move the idea is after uh, something like uh, this move uh, after white will have h5 and also with this move and the pin you will also have uh, h5 so kicking the knight away uh, h6 makes sense takes control over this and by the way uh, Nikolic is a pretty good defender uh, he's not a bad defender he's not a pushover um, and uh, after the very natural move g4 uh, the obvious point is to push forward and uh, exploiting this pin uh, black found a very nice move here uh, preventing all uh, immediately immediate danger uh, if the queen goes in knight uh, for instance here the knight d6 and black is 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 in fine shape i think so he has to take and g5 and we are counting uh, the pieces uh, i think black will get his piece he will white will get his piece back but it will cost a pawn so it will be with equal material so but white has to has more initiative and and this is still a monster bishop and and of course this is not where you want to put your knight her e pawn coming there's also something in the d file uh, here that is is a bit annoying and 
and still the, the pressure keep mounting and uh, if if yeah i don't think i think that's probably necessary and here and white's initiative continues even after the exchange and this business night is is very bad um and we see that this could be a threat in the future oops sorry um and black plays here c5 uh, i think churning suggested h5 that's why it came here and um and here there are uh, a very typical uh, Kasparov thing. He knows that he has a great initiative. He knows that he's attacking. He knows that this knight is not getting out anywhere soon. Uh, the king can't move uh, because then of uh, because of the pin uh, or, or due to this. So what to do here? Well, um, what I think he is is telling himself always is improve the position of the king. So. He plays this move, nice move, and he's he's getting ready uh, for um, for say something like uh, this move and this move and and bad thing is coming Black's way um, and maybe even go here and here is also possible and this one is hard to defend. Um, Black gets ready to to defend a little bit. G4. B4. Okay, he's still after the king. We see that, and and it's kind of interesting because I don't. I think Kasparov as black like the having variation in the Sicilian or the knight of, and uh, and he he seems to like uh, to have a nice good structure. But here he doesn't care. He's just gonna play uh, for dynamics, and um, and that's by the way what I liked about Kasparov is that he was really good on. On, on exactly that thing, um, he sees that this uh, this knight is not going to to join the game. So he's he's just uh, mobilizing his pieces, trying to be as active as possible. Rook a2, um, getting ready to take that. Maybe you can take it, uh, but uh, of course, Black White is, is is hoping to play something like this and this and. Um, and go after this square and of course these two they are not uh, the the most proud pieces um, he does this first um, getting ready to play uh, rook here before he goes uh, down and um, and here black makes a mistake plays this move which is uh, is losing he shoot I played this move, and uh, but he's after this white is still much for choice. The pieces are out of the game. It, I think, a computer will hold this position for black, but uh, I don't think humans would. Uh, but after this move, uh, the combination works great. Uh, rook is coming. Check here, and uh, of course, king is is attacking the knight, and here and there is a little uh, tiny uh, problem e6 hitting here and if uh, this one takes on this square then comes this and check made in two uh, he could also um, so you play this move and after this move uh, black this is, is 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 in trouble. This is in trouble. Everything is 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 losing. So uh, Black gave up this game. A great game by Kasparov, um, and it was uh, very interesting to be the host of the press conference. Uh, he's a pretty cool person. Kind of hard to uh, to sort of copy because uh, he is really smart. <laughs> um, uh, yes, this was uh, GM Talks. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.